Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation from Romania. We have 2 to the power 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 3 plus 2 to the power x minus 17 divided by x minus 3 and the sum is equal to 6 times the square root of 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll also show you a graph that explains the solutions at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. Now, this equation might look a little too complicated, but don't worry, we're going to start examining the exponents. If you look at the exponents carefully, what are some of the things that you notice? One thing that I noticed is they have, uh, they're both fractions and they have the same denominator. So that's a good thing. And another thing that I notice, of obviously this might take some trial and error, but uh, they are somewhat related. How? If you take the first exponent and add it to the second one, I'm just talking about exponents here, you're going to notice the following. 3x plus x is 4x. 5 minus 17 is negative 12, or minus 12, however you want to say it, divided by x minus 3. And 4x minus 12 is factorable, 4 times x minus 3. And as long as x does not equal 3, and you probably know that x cannot equal 3 here because it's in the denominator, so we're going to have to exclude that anyways. Then we can go ahead and cross these out, and we end up with a 4. Now what is that supposed to mean? It means that the exponents add up to 4, which is an integer. So that's nice. So hopefully you got to see this too, or if, even if you didn't, don't worry about it, because these things take uh, practice and lots of patience. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. I have 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 3 plus x minus 17 divided by x minus 3 equals 4, as you can see from here. So what am I going to do with this? If you said substitution, you guessed it right. Yes, I'm going to use substitution. Let's go ahead and call this t. t is my favorite uh, variable these days and also my favorite drink. If this is t, then obviously this is going to be 4 minus t. Because if I ask you, give me two numbers whose sum is 4. And if you say t and 4 minus t, you would be right. And this is actually a good way to avoid having more than a one variable if you're solving uh, equations or systems. Anyways, so hopefully you get the idea. t and 4 minus t add up to 4. And what did we get? We got ourselves a nice system, right? So here's one way to approach it. We can go ahead and write this down and try to solve it. But here's what you're going to find if you do that. You're just going to find that t plus 4 minus t equals 4. So that's not going to help a lot. So instead, let's go ahead and do this. Let's replace it in the original problem. So this is going to be t, right? And this is going to be 4 minus t. So we're going to get 2 to the power t plus 2 to the power 4 minus t. Remember, the exponents were adding up to 4. And the sum is equal to 6 root 2. Now, don't you think this equation looks much, much better than the original one? Because the original one was kind of complicated. But this one still can be simplified more. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, subtraction of exponents indicates division, right? As you should know, we have this rule for exponents, and I'm planning to do a lecture video on exponents as well as polynomials. Hopefully, I'm going to uh, be able to get those and upload as soon as possible. That's why I kind of uh, downgraded on the number of videos that I publish every day. Anyways, that's another story. So from now on, I'm going to try to do one uh, so that I can get to other projects. Anyways. What was I saying? Okay, I was saying that um, we're going to turn it into a nicer form. So here's what we're going to do. The exponents, if some a to the x is divided by a to the y, then we get a to the power x minus y. So this is the rule we're going to use, but we're going to use it backwards. So if the exponents were subtracted, then we can kind of write this as 2 to the 4 divided by 2 to the t. That's what's nice about these properties. You can go back and forth. If I have this, then I, that applies this. If I have this, then that applies the other one implies. Okay, that is equal to 6 root 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. Let's go ahead and write it down. And what do you notice? If you say that 2 to the t repeats, and we must use substitution, 
you're right about that. That's what I'm going to do, substitution within substitution. And obviously, some people could have done this uh, at once. That's fine, but I'd like to break it down and explain things. I hope you don't mind. So, I'm going to call this U. Okay, that's going to be U. And we're going to get U plus 16 over U equals 6 root 2. And obviously, this is much, much better than the original equation. So, we got ourselves a quadratic after multiplying both sides by you, we get something like this. And then we could go ahead and put everything on the same side and get a full quadratic in U. Okay? Now, solving this quadratic is fairly easy. I would probably use the quadratic formula. You could also use completing the square. Uh, it's not easily factorable, so I would avoid factoring. If you can, that's fine. But uh, let's go ahead and use the formula. The quadratic formula tells us negative B the opposite of negative 6 root 2, plus minus the square root of b squared. So we've got to square this, the minus sign doesn't matter when we square uh, this. So it's going to be 36 times 2, which is 72, minus 4, a, a is 1, so it's going to be 4 times 16 being subtracted. And if you do the math, uh, 4 times 16 is 64, 72 minus 64 is 8. So you're going to get the following. Let's go ahead and take another step here. And we're going to get square root of 8. And as you know, or you should know, if you're deal dealing with algebra, pre even pre-algebra, like at the basic level, like uh, radicals, how do you simplify them? Uh, it's going to be 2 root 2. And then from here, I'd like to split it up. So u sub 1 is going to be 6 root 2 plus 2 root 2 over 2. That's going to be 4 root 2. And then u sub 2 is going to be the minus sign divided by 2. And that's going to be... 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that's going to be 2 root 2. Great. So this problem actually was arranged to have good solutions because, first of all, it appeared on a math competition or math olympiad, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we want to get nice results. That's why the numbers uh, contain uh, powers of 2, including the radicals. So this is the u values. Let's go ahead and go back to where we came from, right? So we're going to back substitute twice. We want to get to t and then x. Again, you can do this at once. That's fine too. So u is equal to 2 to the power t, if you remember. And first value gives us 4 root 2. I want to write the 4 root 2 as 2 to the second power times 2 to the power 1 half because square root of 2 means that. And this gives us 2 to the power 5 halves. Notice that this equals this implies t equals 5 halves. And the second u value is going to give me 2 to the t again, but this time 2 root 2, which can be written as 2 times, or 2 to the first power times, 2 to the power 1 half, which is 2 to the power 3 halves. I'm hoping that you guys can add fractions and integers. That should be easy. Uh, if anything doesn't make sense, obviously write a comment and we'll try to answer. I'm pretty sure someone will answer. If I don't, then from here we get t equals 3 halves. That's the other value. So we got two t values, but t is also a substitution or a substitute, t is equal to that gigantic rational expression. So let's go ahead and back substitute here. t is equal to 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 3. And if t is equal to 5 halves, then I'm going to set it equal to 5 halves. And to keep a long story short, distribute 6x plus 10 equals 5x minus 15. Put the x's on one side and the variables on the other, and you're going to get x equals negative 25. If you do the same thing with the other t value, which is 3 halves, then you're going to get 6x plus 10 again equals 3x minus 9. Put the 3x on the left, 3x equals negative 19. And I consider this a nice answer because it's still rational and not super logarithmic or anything. So we got the two values. So our solution set is made up of negative 25 and negative 19 thirds. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. Here's the graph of our function, which is very interesting. So that's kind of like an exponential, rational, rational exponential. And it's a sum. So we got two different areas. Obviously, x equals 3 gives us a vertical asymptote. So our function is going to uh, uh, approach that. And there's also, I believe, a horizontal one. Uh, if you take the limit as x approaches infinity, you're going to notice that you, you're getting something like 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 1, which I believe is going to be 10. So y equals 10 is also 
and asymptote uh, and you can see that here too kind of like plane but it uh, by the way you can um, intersect a horizontal but you can never intersect a vertical asymptote I hope you know what asymptote means it's just the line that our graph is trying to approach but can never intersect in the case of vertical asymptotes and this brings us on those are the solutions by the way negative 19 thirds to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video make sure to watch the shorts until then be safe take care and bye bye